morning. Peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you. We're so glad to see you this morning on this our 158th church anniversary. We need to give ourselves a round of applause. We can't give that long. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our call to worship by our lay leader, Ms. Barbara Brown.
scripture and decided that it would be a responsive reading rather than me getting up here and just reading the scripture to you like we normally do on Sunday. So the scripture for this morning is on the uh, right side of your bulletin, and you will read the, the lower part. It is good to praise the Lord and make news to your name, O Most High. To the music of the ten string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you may be glad of your deeds, I sing for you all the of life. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand. That though the wicked spring up like grass, and all evil doers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evil doers will be scattered. You have exalted my Lord, and I have My Lord shall be born with me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the, the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish on my heart. They will go and sit on the land. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They, they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Proclaiming the Lord is our right. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him. Amen. Kathleen White Singleton, Annie Talbert and families, the Foster family, the Brown family, Hilda and Marion Cromwell, Barbara Harrison, pray for Ann Fields' family. And uh, I know you all got my message of, concerning my mom. Pray for Peggy, as she's lovingly called. She's here with us. Raise your hand, Mom. Let me see you here. I know that there are others that you are concerned about this morning. And as always, we ask you to lift those names up that they might be included in all of our prayers. Are there any this morning? Kenneth and Laura Washington. Amen. Carrie Mitchell and Beth. Amen. Amen. 
sorry, I didn't hear you. Amen.
believe the lies of the world that there is no God. We pray that they would find evidence of human all creation and in our testimony. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves that our faith would continue to grow and that we would be strengthened to the work to which you have called us to do. Loosen our tongues so that we may witness and testify to the power and saving love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, our works are not by our will, but it is by yours, and that it may be done. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus, and for his sake. Amen. Amen. And amen. Audience arose and said, 
brethren and sisters, there will be no galleries in heaven. Those who are willing to go to a church that makes no distinction as race or color, follow me to the normal school on the corner of Ukraine and St. Philip Street. They responded to the irresistible image of the old mother church, portrayed by Reverend Lewis, rose to a man, and enthusiastically departed from training. Church is interesting evidence of God's care for his work. The people worshiping in the normal school early observed the day of fasting and prayer that God would supply them with a suitable building. Bishop Baker heard of this touching instance of faith. He promised the brethren that the missionary would assist them in securing a church. It was discovered that the Wentworth Street Baptist Church was for sale. The society had begun to cripple by the war that it was determined to unite with the congregation of the Citadel Baptist Church. The Wentworth Street property, an elegant Corinthian style of brick structure designed by E.B. White, with a final lecture room attached, had an estimated value of $75,000. Negotiations was immediately began, resulting in a bargain of $20,000. This amount, the Missionary Society agreed to furnish. When the Baptist Brethren discovered that their church was to fall into the hands of the Northern Brethren for the use of colored congregation, they imposed further conditions, which seemed likely to prevent the sale. They said the money must be paid in gold. And during the banking hours of an appointed day, gold commanded a premium of 50%, which was an additional $10,000. Meetings were called, collectors appointed, heroic efforts were made. Some mothers contributed money which had been scarcely laid away for their burial. As there was not $20,000 available in gold in the city, the broker was authorized to purchase the amount in New York City. The box of precious mail reached Charleston on the morning of the day when the money was to be paid or the body broken. The broker declined the draft, the draft of $20,000 of the Missionary Society, which the brethren presented. Mr. George W. Williams agreed to cash the draft as exchange, but then commanded a premium against the brethren. This involved an additional outlay of a few hundred dollars. Mr. Thomas Talley and other well-to-do members of the church were fortunately able to command the needed amount. Mr. Williams checked was accepted by the broker and the dreary carried the box of gold to the lawyer's office where the papers were to be signed. Just as the 2,000 gold eagles were being rung up on the counter, the minute hand of the clock began to count off the last hour of the appointed time, and the property passed forever to the hands of the Methodist Episcopal Church. The deed was made out to the Missionary Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church to be held in trust by Alonzo Webster, Charles Holloway, George Shrewsbury, John Gibbs, Jacob Mills, Samuel Weston, January Holmes, and Archibald Walker, trustees of the Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston. This transaction took place the 10th of April, 1866. <laughs> Sierra, thank you so much. Um, but I want you to know that while you were up there reading, I, I was distracted by this man sitting behind me. He kept saying, ain't she pretty? She is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
you will, as the choir, please give us a selection. Give us something that make a little bit popular. <laughs>
Uh, the only thing that's different about her now, let me stand up. The only thing that's different about Leslie now is that collar around her neck. <laughs> she is now a pastor in Greater Wells of the Amen. So she came to us as a Lysinian, but now she is a pastor. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So after the next uh, selection, you will hear from our friend, Pastor Leslie Graham. Amen. Hear her.
fight is already fixed. I don't know if you know that or not. But the fight is already fixed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ah, let us pray. Oh, gracious, eternal, wise God, we come to say thank you. Thank you, dear Heavenly God, for this day, and thank you for this celebration today. And, oh, God, we thank you for the years and, and that you have brought them through, oh, God, to this very moment. Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. And, dear God, I ask right now that you would hide me behind your cross. Yes, oh, God, and I ask that you would use me as your holy vessel. Yes, Speak through me, God, to your children. Oh, God, we all need you, God, and we need a word from you today. Yes, so we ask, dear God, to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes, Thank you, Reverend Moses, for calling upon me. My pleasure. Did I turn it on? Yeah. Oops, <laughs> I saw that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Reverend Moses, for uh, allowing me to stand here today. Um, I'm glad to be back in your midst one more time. And I don't uh, take it lightly when someone contacts you and asks you to be their speaker on their church program, because I call it an honor, and to God be the glory. And he is correct, the last time I stood before you, I was a licensure. And to God be the glory, I am ordained an itinerant deacon in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and I am now the pastor of Greater Bethel Area Church in Hanahan. And uh, today I have traveling with me my steward pro tem, Brother uh, Jackson, if you would stand real quick for me. Thank you so much for traveling with me, guys, this morning. I said, don't let your pastor go by yourself. <laughs> so I thank God for them. And uh, my husband, Jeffrey, uh, he would have been here also, but he's also pastoring now. He, too, is um, an itinerant, ordained as an itinerant deacon, and he's pastoring Providence a Church right up the road at, on Jacksonville Road in the height. So, to God be the glory, I promise that our home is split every single morning. <laughs> but we're giving God all the glory and the praise, and we're doing the will, the will of the Lord. So Centenary, you are celebrating 150 years, 58 years of existence. And I'm sure in these 158 years, your ancestors, your uh, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, the trailblazers of this great church, whose shoulders you all stand on today, who have worked hard to make this church what it is today, I'm sure that if they could speak right now, they would tell you that yes, we've had some good days, and yes, we've had some bad days. And yes, we've had some hills to climb. We even had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But they endured the hardship and the challenges of slavery, of Jim Crow, and Civil War, and even today, we are still experiencing the modern day of each of those challenges. But 158 years ago, the members of Centenary United Methodist Church were weary. They were weak and worn and exhausted and exasperated. They loved the Lord, but they were tired despite the favor of God on them. We have heard the history. Even though they were able to Worship in the gallery of Trinity United Methodist Church 158 years ago, your ancestors stepped out on faith, withdrew from worshiping at Trinity United Methodist, and in 1866, the congregation purchased this edifice here at 60 Wentworth Street. Your history on your website only gives straight facts, but in my sanctified soul and theological mind now, I am certain to and, and to be able, you know, just to, 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 to start this church on their own, their experience that they had back then were some good days and some bad days, some weary days and some sleepless nights. Because I know it wasn't easy for them. I know as we said today, the struggle was real. And I'm sure they were weary, weak, and worn, exhausted, and exasperated. 
but they persevered with faith because they were committed, connected to God, and they knew they needed the Lord for strength for the journey. Which brings me to our text today. Our text today is coming from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 31. Very familiar to many of us, I'm sure. Um, we all have heard it. We all have said it. And this text uh, in Isaiah 40 and 31, it just simply reads, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. For a sermon title for a few moments, recommit, reconnect, for renewed strength to keep on going. The core of this text is around the belief of trusting in God. Everything else in this verse is developed from that of hope. This is a cause and effect verse. The Hebrew word for hope is one that expresses expectation. What are you expecting God to do for you in your life? Those who hope in the Lord believe that God will deliver. And I'm sure 158 years ago, they believed that God would deliver. And that becomes the source of our confidence and the reason that we can wait on God to deliver us in faith. We wait patiently in faith. So my brothers and sisters, in the text, the children of Israel had lost their hope. They were tired, they were weary, they were worn, they were exhausted and exasperated. They were beaten and battered of life. And uh, you know, and I'm sure during the past few years, some of you can agree with me to these same feelings that we too, we face challenges. You know, even back in COVID-19, and making ways to continue in our worship. And then, you know, and then everybody decided they weren't comfortable with coming to worship, you know, in-person worship. And even though there was available vaccines, we, they, they still didn't come. And even now today, everybody going everywhere they want to go. But the pews in the church are empty. Even today, you find folks still making excuses to not attend in-person worship. People make up excuses not to be in the house of the Lord, where they are able to use their God-given talents, their God-given gifts and time, and give their God-given time, because they're tired, they're weary, and they're worn. And some of you, if we be honest with ourselves, you too may feel that I fit in that category. I know I do sometimes. Sometimes I feel tired, weary, worn, and just simply done. And 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 you feel that way, and you under the sound of my voice, because you always here. You always here putting in your time. And as my mama used to say, put a brick on the wall for myself. So you're always here. And, and you're answering the call of the need to work in the vineyard for the Lord. And because the others, the others, know there's work to be done in the vineyard, but they choose to make up an excuse every week as to why they can't be here physically in the house of the Lord. You know, you too, you're here, putting the brick on the wall for yourself, but you gotta face the challenges in your own personal life as well. You have to deal with your family issues and problems. You got to deal with people on your job and your job issues and problems. And you, you are depleted sometimes and you are drained sometimes. You love the Lord and you hate your situation sometimes because you know God has been good to you, but you feel favored and frustrated at the same time. It's a real thing, y'all. It causes you to become weary and worn and tired. But I have come with the word for you today to help you stay on this journey. And I stop by to remind you to recommit and reconnect for renewed strength to keep on going. In this text of reassurance to the Israelites, uh, they are now captives, slaves of Babylonian for, for their disobedience and they get 70 whole years of Nebuchadnezzar's knees on their neck. 
They are tired, they are weary, and they're worn, full of anxiety and stress. But God, somebody say, but God with me. But God, God sent his messenger Isaiah to remind them that he is still God and that he sees what they're going through. And that because he loves them so much, because they are his chosen people, he will deliver them. And God told Isaiah to let to let his children know that he is from everlasting to everlasting. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never becomes faint or weary, and there is no limit to his understanding. He gives strength to the faint, and strength strengthens the powerless. Youth may become faint and weary, and young men may stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar wings like eagles. Ah, oh, and they will run and not become weary, and they will walk and not faint. Recommit, reconnect for renewed strength to keep on going. To fully understand and live and experience this text, you must recommit, reconnect to the Lord to have renewed strength for this journey to keep on going. So I hear you asking, how do I commit? How do I recommit? By repenting of your sins. Tell the Lord you apologize. Tell the Lord that you are heartily sorry for all your sins and shortcomings. Tired of, of just making ends meet? Tell the Lord, I am tired, Lord. Here am I, Lord, ready to be used for your glory, Lord. Lord, I come to re recommit and rededicate myself to your service. The Lord will equip you for the journey if you recommit your life back to him for his service. And then, reconnect, you say. This is your theme, to reconnect as well. And you know when your cell phone battery gets low, or your laptop or computer at home, it says you need to connect to the power source. Why you gotta connect to the power source? Because it's about to die, right? So, what do you do? Ain't nobody wanna be disconnected from the world, right? So, we hurry up and we plug in, so we can get some more power. So we can stay connected to the world, right? Well, that's the same thing. Being saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You gotta stay connected to your power source. Who is God? The Lord is your power source. And if you stay connected to Him, you don't have to be, be worried about being disconnected. And you don't have to worry about anything that you need because your power source is going to supply everything that you need. It's the same for us, y'all. If we are connected to the Lord, how are we staying charged and up and ready to do the work for the Lord? How do you think your ancestors made it? They ain't had no cell phone. They ain't had no laptop. They ain't had no power. Oh, but they had some Holy Ghost power. That's where their power came from on high. That's where they had their power from. They had the power from on high. How do you think your ancestors was able to purchase this building back then for $20,000? And gold, y'all. Your history says that Bishop Baker was impressed by the earnest prayers of the congregation for a suitable building and promised them the aid. Well, if Bishop Baker back then was impressed by the earnest prayers of the people, well, what did the Lord do? How do you think God reacted to your ancestors' earnest prayers? The prayers of the righteous avail of much. So what does God do? God opened up heaven and poured out many blessings there, $20,000 in gold, and then some to come for you to have this edifice today. They knew back then that prayer works, and they knew that the blood still worked. They knew they could count on God, and they knew they could not make it on their own, that it was why, and that's why they stayed in the prayer to stay connected to their power source, Jesus. We must do the same today, y'all. We got to do the same. You cannot become disconnected. This connection allows sin to come in. But if we stay connected to Jesus, our power cord is the blood of Jesus. And it, it reaches to the highest mountain, y'all. And it falls to the lowest valley. So we reconnect to, the, to your power source, Jesus. And he will reboot your life for the journey and give you the strength that you need to keep on going. And then lastly, before I take my seat, uh, renew 
Hallelujah strength. Yeah, I said several times that you get tired, that you get weary, that you get worn, because people say that. People get on your nerves. And people will worry you. People will bring you wreak, wreak some havoc in your life. But my brothers and sisters, even when your battery is fully charged, when that battery is fully charged, you still feel a little tired and you move a little slower. Life begins life and people begin to act the people on you and things happen to distract your mind, y'all. That's when the people come in at And that's what it, they're designed to do because the, the devil uses them to, to distract you, to get you off course and cause your battery to start be going down. You know when it's fully charged, all the blocks will and then all of a sudden you see the block starting to get a little empty and then you get down to that one bar and the red light, come on. That's your morning light. Your morning light in real life is when you feel the need that you gotta cut some out. Your morning light in life is when you feel that you get to the stuff like you say, you know you got one more time to break in front of me. Your morning light is when you come into church and you say good morning and you don't hear somebody say it back and you say, you know what, you got one more time to not And that means you got to reconnect, y'all. Yes. You got to get your battery charged back up. And when your battery is fully charged, and when it's fully charged, even though you may move a little slower, because life is life. But I just stopped by to remind you today that you got to continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand, y'all. That is how 150 years you can celebrate today, because they never let go of God's hand. Even though trials and tribulations and, and problems came, they never let go of God's unchanging hand. They remain connected to the Lord. Because God will give you and renew strength for you for this journey. Because our God, he sits high and he looks low. And our God's promises are true. And God is our all in all, y'all. We can't turn to man because man is going to fail us. But if we keep our hands in the hand of God, I promise you, my God, Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And those who seek the Lord, and those who worship the Lord, and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm telling you today, my brothers and sisters, all you got to do is surrender it all to God. And God will give you the strength for the journey. If you need strength, he'll give it to you. If you need a little more hope today, he'll give it to you. If you need a little more patience today, he'll give it to you. And I tell you, the promises of God is true. If you need just a little more love today in your life for this journey, because I tell you, it ain't, it ain't easy, y'all. The devil is waiting for you. Sometimes I used to say, wait for you to get out the door, but no, he waiting for us to be finished with science. It'll happen in the church. And when he comes, you got to be committed you got to be connected so that you will have the strength to withstand the wiles of the devil. Because if you are not connected to your strength, to your source, your power source, if the blood of Jesus is not reaching down to you, my brothers and sisters, I don't know how you're making it. You are like a ship being tossed on an angry sea from side to side. You don't have to be like that in life. Life don't have to beat you down by the sea. Because when you are connected, oh, when you reach up and you look to the hills from which your help, your help come. Oh my God, God is going to grab hold to you. And God, if you got to reach way down and pick you back up, he's going to do it. He's going to reconnect you to him. Because there is nothing, nothing in this life too hard for God. Our ancestors paved the way. Centenary, your path has already been paved. Yeah, you may have some dips in the road. Yeah, you may have some curves in the road. Yeah, you may have some bends in there too. But every time it happens, all you do is just keep on connecting and holding on to God's unchanging hand. Because God's promised to us, but then that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like the wings of eagles. They shall run 
and they shall not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Recommit, reconnect for the renewed strength to keep on going on this journey. Amen. On the porch. On the porch. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyway, we talked about that. <laughs> well, we're glad that you're here this morning, and we will continue to pray for you in the loss of yes. uh, Brother Al Conyers. Uh, I spoke with
dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it, but they've got the meal prepared for you. Uh, my, my toast bird is not, is it using his family? I've already done that. I did that oh, earlier. Really Everyone has not seen them. Please stand. We have his brother, Keith, and his uh, brother, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his mother, uh, Agnes, uh, his sister, Gail, uh, and his brother, Sherman. Yeah, like they spring this in <laughs> Y'all know my family. They've been with us with picnics and all kinds of stuff. My wife, I tell you. <laughs> oh, I wanted to also tease, uh, tease uh, Sierra. Uh, we see what it takes to, to make you get up and sing now. Reggie got to call you pretty. <laughs> Amen. Come and join us for dinner, for lunch, whatever you want to call it. 